So thank you. Thank you, everyone, for joining uh, yet another Friday evening. I'm uh, very grateful that you all have taken your time to join. I know you all are working. And uh, there's a lot of delivery work that, that's on the floor. And uh, I'm sure you're all busy. But uh, you've taken out your time, you know, two hours of time on a Friday. So I'll try to make it count every single minute and try to see if this time will help you. So today's topic is fitness beyond body. So let me go ahead and share my screen. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So this is fitness beyond body. So like always, I always read this about the seminar. So please focus as I, as I read that part of it. Now, fitness is a term primarily used in relation to the body. But fitness also applies to the mental and emotional aspects of self. In fact, today, mental fitness is understood to be the center of all other fitness. If one is mentally fit, then it automatically follows with emotional fitness and finally physical fitness. The seminar explains the relationship between mind, body and soul. It also explains how to become mentally fit in the midst of all adversities of life. So that's about uh, today's seminar in a gist, right? So I remember uh, this Vedic scholar saying that the body is a temple of God. One needs to protect it and keep it healthy and clean, right? And there is also from Mahatma Gandhi says, it is health that is real wealth and not the pieces of gold and silver. Yeah, no one can say this better than uh, we people who just have seen through COVID pandemic, right? None of the gold and silver could help anyone. And whoever had good immunity and whoever kept his body well survived. So in today's topic, we are going to deal with mind and body connection, right? So what is this mind and body? Is there a connection at all, right? We all know it is, but we'll discuss a little for more clarity. And then we'll discuss about mental health. Is it a growing concern, right? Is it really a concern? Um, why are we even discussing this topic? I don't think any of us uh, have gone to a mental hospital, right? So why are we even discussing a, a topic which talks about mental health? Uh, mental health not being good means what? Pagale. In Hindi they say pagale. In Telugu they say pichodu, right? Uh, so we're all well-educated working in a company. So why are we even discussing something called mental health, right? Is it a growing concern? Then thoughts and, phys th thoughts and physical health, are they related? You know, how we think and how we are fit physically, are these both related? We'll, we'll dwell on that. And dealing with health problems, uh, we will see how to deal with them and how to gain willpower and stay healthy always, right? Of course, awakening the medicine within the final conclusion. How can how can we uh, deal with our mental problems? Each one can have a different kind of uh, problem according to the life you have led. We'll try to have Q and A. Uh, I would request right. Let's have that Q and A in between the session itself, right? Uh, as we as we go on. So, how many of you, even before I start the seminar, uh, like I always request. Um, how many of you feel that this is a topic that you want to really hear and why? You can open your mics and uh, if possible, the screens, I can see some of you at least. Why are you even attending this session? And uh, what, what do you think is the importance of having good mental health? And what does it mean by mental health? Let's have a little open house and then I'll get into the seminar anyways. No one? Or is it a problem with my audio again? Uh, no, no, <laughs> no issue with your speaker. <clears throat> so anyone would like to share thought that why we are here today in this session? I mean, my question is very simple. I'll try to put it again. Is there a mental health issue that you see around? 
and uh, how important you think it is and what does it mean by mental health what comes to your mind when you hear mental health good uh, lakshman prasanna here yes prasanna yeah uh, because of office work or homework i mean uh, we are not able to do any exercise or something so at some point of, or at some age we actually want to do some uh, exercises mm -hmm. like yoga or something so there we should actually like uh, we are not getting time or we are not able to uh, take the time from the things whatever it is okay so you really see some time constraints are there and you are not able to prioritize your health correct yeah and my question was about mental health do you see uh, any issues with mental health when you talk to people these days or what comes to your mind when you say mental health what is mental health oh, balance stress disturbed let's let's take one at a time yeah swati you are saying something thought process how how you are able to control uh, your emotions it's not only to suppress emotions but how balanced you can showcase your feelings so that shows uh, your mental health so mm -hmm. what happens usually we think okay we should look slim we should reduce weight we should look good but the thought process for every uh, the basic reason for every health issue is uh, what doctor quotes is stress mm -hmm. but what is that stress right so that is linked with your mental mental health yeah that's correct so stress is linked to your mental health yeah anybody else what comes to your mind when you say mental health Let, be open you know just say whatever that comes to your mind uh, job doing uh, women who can uh, like uh, they want to balance professional life as well as personal life okay uh so you're saying they are very stressed out trying to balance both uh at present i am not able to balance okay thank you padmaja what else comes to your minds mental health lakshmi sir this is aastha so i yes. believe it's stress stress disturb when we talk about mental mental health so if we see people like they are very stressful nowadays okay to any of the reasons disease workload not satisfied at the office or home these are the reasons could be okay anything else okay let me ask a question a little different way uh, whom do you call a person with good mental health somebody who is laughing all the time Uh, no. Yeah, Indra. Indra, see now, ready? Take it, sir. Yeah, handling both family and uh, office. No, no, no. I think, I think, I think we are, I think we are uh, misunderstanding my question here. See, I'm not asking. Uh, are you able to? What is the challenge today? I'm not asking what is your challenge today. I think your challenge, many of you are saying, is how do I balance my office work and my personal. Uh, job right so personal personal works right i think that's a different topic maybe one day one day we can uh, have a separate seminar which are which i have i'm asking what what is what, what what do you mean by saying somebody is in a good mental condition whereas somebody is in a not so good mental condition what does it mean uh, who is sportive whenever an issue comes he mm -hmm. faces very very sportively means like not going to stress or uh, instead of that uh, he is uh, trying to resolve the issue very... without the stress ready okay. to take up the issues yeah overthinking overthinking somebody is overthinking everything okay more than needed yeah okay that's a good point yes all your answers are right i'm just trying emotional, to emotional emotional thinking or emotional well there's nothing wrong being emotional we all are emotional people now uh, we do have emotions in fact as a human we should have emotions there's nothing wrong about it 
sometimes it may not required actually uh maybe. sometimes you may you may not need emotions is what you are saying uh maybe we cross that okay cross okay. the Keep limit going. maybe you become too emotional is your yeah. what you saying yeah yeah meaning you take it very hard on your heart correct everything that is happening you take it very seriously mm -hmm. yeah like ah, now i get it okay yes yes that's one of the good points yes so somebody is having um, mental health problems means he's taking things very seriously beyond what is needed we should take things seriously but beyond what's needed yes that's a good point prasanna anybody else what comes to your mind when you say mental health okay let me ask a question um, say if you are living in a very enjoying city with lot of uh, uh, sports and enjoyment uh, activities like something like let's name a city like las vegas right uh, though people call it sin city i had been there and uh, it's a good place to go a lot of casinos lot of shows live shows and um, you know the whole strip of uh, you know vegas is very very nice so so much enjoyment and everything going on so do you still see any possibility of people having mental health there mental health problems criticizing was that criticizing yes. so when you you're saying that people who have mental health problems to criticize yes, yes. depending upon the mind okay okay thank you you know i'm i'm very grateful that you all have spoken <laughs> because i did not want to be the only speaker uh, right from the beginning so it kind of opens up all your thoughts right so what is this mental health why are we even discussing about it and that's a very important thing we'll we'll deal with in the beginning so mind and body connection so what is mind so my dear friends mind is not you remember that one thing you and mind are two different people mind is not you it might be a surprising statement for many of you but uh, mind and you are two different things your mind can make you mad your mind can make you peaceful so what is this mind mind is a repository of all your desires what is mind a repository like for example a hard drive so you take this hard drive and go wherever you go and every, anywhere you like some files or images you put into that hard drive and keep putting it to the hard drive hard drive hard drive so the only difference between mind and hard drive is hard drive just keeps the data but mind processes the data and also keeps giving you desires to fulfill those uh, activities you know fulfill those desires keeps giving you uh, intuitions and keeps giving you uh, indications that hey now it's the time to fulfill my desire right so what is mind again very simple it's a hard drive of all your desires all your desires that's a hard drive good and bad desires not only good desires even bad desires right so whenever you got any kind of desire um, that is stored into the mind you might think that you have forgotten you might say oh i used to desire that now i don't have but the desire is still there in the mind it's a unfulfilled desire which mind will look for the right opportunity in your life and it will invoke it it will it will trigger you that, hey that now is the time to fulfill the desire right so that's what mind does and if you're not in control of your mind then what happens then you land up doing some activities which you may not want to or which may not be a right thing to do in life right so a person who cannot control his mind mind is the greatest enemy but the person who can control his mind mind is the greatest friend right these are not my words these are words by lord shri krishna in bhagavad gita he tells to arjuna that arjuna you have to control your mind because for the person who has uh, controlled his mind uh, the liberation is achieved right for example he is he has done everything done you are able to control your mind meaning or you are able to control your desires right and then the person who cannot control them for him his his mind itself is the greatest hell he doesn't have to complain on anyone that itself is the greatest hell now when your mind is in a good state your body automatically is in a proper state 
body gets affected immensely by your mental situation like mind and body link there is a lot in the internet you know uh, this is not something that we are cooking up but there is a lot in the internet which talks about so many physical problems which are related to mental problems right um, i'll tell you one simple example i'll tell my own example not that i'm in a very good mental health but i'm just telling you how positive mental health can help you see when uh, last time in, i think in october in in march me and my uh, last year 2021 year in 22 now so march 2021 uh, me my father my mother we three of us we went to a hospital for uh, some check up for my father he was having some uh, breathing issues not uh, lungs breathing issue but some kind of suffocation so i took him to a hospital unfortunately that day we three of us got affected by covid the hospital itself and then we came home and then my father is like 78 uh, years old very old my mother is like 75 and uh, i started getting fever they started getting fever and one of the symptoms that you have covid is that the fever doesn't reduce fever is consistent even though you are having dolo or combi flu whatever you have certain days when it is really affecting your fever is always high so i was really having fever and uh, that was a phase 2 of covid you all remember that very dangerous time all of us spent so everybody has a story to say the reason i'm taking the example now is so i was down with covid my temperature was 102 and uh, my father he is a diabetic bp patient thyroid has all kinds of problems his temperature also 100 203 for two days continuously and i was really getting worried then i was wondering who can take him to hospital because the doctor i called the doctor and the doctor who was monitoring us he said okay lakshman bring him to the hospital i think uh, it's about time his oxygen um, levels are falling they are almost 87 86 now Uh, by keeping a, a oxygen concentrator we are able to maintain him at 90 to 93 which is also less it should be ideally more than 95 so i think it's about time we bring him to hospital so then i was wondering who is going to take him to hospital and is too old to even stand up and walk with with all that uh, problems that he has uh, and my mother is also down my wife is taking care of the children so wondering who is going to do this and who which friend can i call because everybody is one is scared with covid everybody has a family so i just got up with my fever i got up and uh, i said let's go to hospital so i took him uh, like a like a walking bomb right i'm like i myself am with covid so i just put on my mask put on some gloves i said okay i'm going to protect myself and not go very near to people but i have to take him is no one else to take him i'm sure many of you would have fallen into a similar situation where you have to do what is needed even though you're covid you have to walk and get things done so it so happened that i was so concerned for my father that i forgot that I had covid in a way i forgot i know that i have covid but i and i had fever also and i was very weak myself but because there is a need to take my father from one hospital to another hospital admit him and then go and buy those remedy fire injections struggle to find them and then get him the needed uh, help in the hospital and um, constantly be available so that uh, if they need anything else in the icu i should be able to supply it so happened that i was so busy uh, taking care of his needs my mother was at home she didn't need to her oxygen levels were good so she didn't she didn't need move into hospital but i had i had to take my father and friends i'll tell you something that my covid went away by itself because i was so busy to even recognize that it is still there in me right uh, so i would say that is because of the mental strength that the mind can surpass uh, the bodily situation and uh, actually cure you when you are mentally not even bothered with it you know so mental strength is very very important so when i was discussing with the doctor he told yes maybe that's what cured you because you just ignored covid you did not even pay attention to it you were running around for your father desperately trying to figure things out 
that you didn't care about covid in you maybe if you would have if you would have you know sat down in your home wondering what covid will do to you you might also have some uh, your health situation might also have deteriorated or must have been worse as compared to right now because you did not even care about it right so mental health is about how much you are able to control your mind and how much you are able to ignore things that you are not needed to focus that much are you all following what i'm saying did you understand the example that i gave yes uh, negative thoughts we need to remove yeah you don't even care about it you, you know i it, it annoyingly happened in my in my example i didn't even care about the covid the covid was there but i just left it alone you know even if i'm feeling a little breathless i just started walking i was going around getting the medicines getting giving it and and i said okay whatever happens right in the meantime it just got cured but the mental condition really helped it that i was so busy actually uh, you know when you're working on your projects even office work when you're totally immersed in what you're doing and totally you know connected to the deliverables and the client and the targets and everything you don't fall sick this is not a blanket statement you will not fall sick because you are mentally so strong and focused that you actually even sickness comes you'll keep it aside sometimes you don't even eat and your focus you like your work you know and and you like the like to achieve the target so but when the project gets over and then now i want to go on a vacation and you just cool down and immediately you fall sick i don't know how many of you have experienced this has anybody experienced something like that that right after the project when you want to relax you fall sick yeah maybe you know it happened with me it happened with many people i know because what happens is when you focus on your body your mind becomes a little weak right and you then you start thinking why oh, is everything okay is everything okay but at that time you fall sick because you're too weak so mentally you're not that strong at that point so when one has a sound mind physical problems also don't affect so this is one of the things second 99.99 percent suicides are not due to physical health issues due to mental health issues right and we'll discuss about what those mental health issues are in the in the time that we're going to spend right six packs can start a relationship but to maintain we need six pats every day from our loving partner <laughs> i like the statement so i just kept it here right so we need people around us who will encourage us who will tell us uh, what is good what is good for us uh, we always need that encouragement even on the floor even on the office time don't sit beside depressing people who are comparing with you and uh, envious of you instead spend time with even if they are juniors if they are your well wishers they they like to share your happiness spend time with them because when they pat on your on your back saying good job you know that gives you more encouragement and that keeps your mental health very well right um love in relationships is based on mind's ability to appreciate and respond to others needs and that needs a healthy mind right so uh, if somebody is not having a good relationship don't blame the partner blame your own mind uh, how much you how are you handling so when you talk about body mind body and spirit right when you talk about body it's about how we take care of our bodies what we put into our bodies how what we eat you know how physically fit you are when you talk about minds mind it immediately what comes to your mind is thoughts words what we see and hear and your attitude etc all these things sit in the mind then spirit is all about the inner consciousness and the inner strength that you have inner strength is how much you depend on somebody greater than you whom we all address as god how much faith you have how humble you feel yourself you are uh, how grateful you are how hopeful you are and what is your ultimate relationship with that supreme yeah we all say give name to him krishna rama jehova you know allah whatever name you give to him how much relationship do you have with him you know uh, is it just what you think is it your mind speaking or god speaking sometimes people also get confused with that i think god just told me to do this you know but actually it's your mind that told you to do that <laughs> so how do you recognize if god is speaking to you somebody your most well wisher 
always your well wisher or is it your mind talking to you as i said some time back your mind is not you you and your mind are two different people so your physical health and mind connection has got a lot of relationship is mental health really a challenge today uh, let us go by you know some research done by some people around the world right uh, a lot of people think that western countries people are very cool they very light minded light hearted you know um, people don't get so tensed up or uh, what do you say uh, people don't get so stressed out in western countries hmm? often when you ask friends why do you want to go to america um, or europe they say that oh the stress levels are very low there ikkada there is so much stress you know uh, you have to work 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 there i can balance my life uh, how many have heard this how many really think like this come on be open to say it's okay how many feel that western life gives you less stress as compared to indian life i'm raising my hand hmm indra sena reddy you are saying yes yes yeah who else any other comments on this western life versus indian life which is more stressful for me foreign life is i mean uh, western life is more stressful uh, yeah yes you know western life is stressful i have been i have been in the west also um sometimes even indian life is very stressful so what makes uh, what is the difference between having a stressful life versus non stressful life whether it is america or india um, the place itself makes it stressful or something lack of something makes it stressful most important thing is relationships when you don't have good relationships trustworthy relationships in your life automatically life becomes very stressful that's very important to know right so now we'll we'll try to see some statistics quickly i'll go through i don't want to spend too much time on this slide so let's start with our famous so called dream of uh, all telugu or telugu walas what is their country <laughs> usa right now here as per the 2013 survey done by american college health association it says about 7% reported seriously considering suicide in the colleges right i mean even reputed colleges uh more than 50% were overwhelmingly there were overwhelmingly anxiety driven lives and 31% felt so depressed that it was difficult to function right these are not me you know uh, we want to show that there are people who care now these are all sentences coming from american research on their students right uh, let's go one more like right? it says uh mental illness you know 25 years earlier right adults living with serious mental illness die 25 years earlier than normal people meaning you are supposed to live 75 years you'll die at 50 you know this is again a research done in a paper that was published these are these all researches are very nicely done let's talk about australia right australia it says um this is also a research done which says uh, one in five women and one in eight men are likely to experience depression the probability is more than 15 to 20% right and uh, 1 million people in depression in australia this is like a 5 6 year old survey right so as you can see anxiety and uh, excuse me i had a heavy lunch <laughs> so anxiety and uh, uh, you know depression seems to be a very important even in australia so six australian die by suicide every day and out of the six five of them are men so this is a very uh, you know something that we should think of australia and it also says 6.2 billion reasons people have for young mental health right and government is spending huge 6.29 billion dollars you know uh, because of mental health issues it is losing rather canada 
Canada, again, another destination that our people want to go. And there's, they say that the suicide rate is unbelievably high. Uh, government uses a lot due to mental health issues, right? Um, yes, you know, there is positive mental health calculation also going on. There is Public Health Agency of Canada. It's an institution which does uh, research on why people are experiencing mental health issues at a society level because of inequality, discrimination at a community level about social problems, relationship problems, family, at the individual level, they, you know, they have a lot of violence and issues that are going on, right? And uh, Europe, another destination where people like to go, uh, between 21 to 23 percent of children live in a household where at least one parent is experiencing mental illness. So can you imagine one out of four houses, one out of four houses on your floor, people have serious mental illness issues, right? And so many, uh, it's an estimated 45% of the children who have mild or moderate conduct problems go to commit half or all crime, right? So people who had mental issues while they were children, 45% of them turn out to be criminals. Can you imagine? Uh, such a big important number to say, right? And uh, why parents think they are susceptible to mental health problems? Uh, because of social media, which contributes body image. How do I look? How do I look like a plastic doll? Uh, schoolwork, too much social isolation, no relationships, right? Uh, schools have changed, parents or children lose, have, have, you know, they have less close relationships. And it's very clear that one out of seven, you know, are committing suicide after their pregnancy. Can you believe it? In Europe, in Europe, so-called, you know, say reasons for death, after a quarter of women who died between six weeks and one year after pregnancy due to mental health issues, right? Uh, it's such an important thing. I forgot that exact, exact uh, uh, name of the disorder. Mostly women uh, go through the disorder is that after they give birth to children, um, they see that the whole family is kind of expecting them to take care of the children. And the child also takes so much attention of the mother that they actually go into depression. And there are cases where the mother have actually killed their own children. I know it's a very uh, negative topic to speak, but I'm just trying to tell you all, I, I forgot that word. It's, called, it's something to do with post pregnancy, depression, something like that. There is a word to it, a very famous illness. If it is not properly addressed, it can lead to havoc. You know, one mother in America, she killed four children in her bathtub when she had that problem. Now, being in India, we don't actually have these problems. You know, we should be, I'm, I'm, I'm going to show something in India also, but the problem that it said, post-pregnancy depression is not there in India, primarily because Family and parents have a big role to play when a child is born in India, right? The mother goes to the, you know, the, the lady goes to her mother's house and she's nicely taken care and the pregnancy most of the time happens in the mother's house or the mother comes and stays and or the mother-in-law comes and stays and there is a whole family. Which, and we have so many ceremonies. See, after a childbirth, you have the 21st day ceremony, you have um, Siksha, you know, ceremony. And you have removing of hair, right? Uh, the the birth hair, removing the birth hair, and uh, there are so many sanskars uh, uh, as per the as per the Vedic scriptures. There are so many that you do that the mother actually never feels that she's alone. She's not tied up to the child. You know there is her world also. Um, and actually, if you see in India, women and men together have contributed to the family wellness. Even women have. Um, supported their uh, husband in doing his business. How did they take care of the children at the same time? Because they always lived in a joint family system. And uh, the children were taken care of by the grandparents and by the parents also, but mostly by the grandparents, uncles, aunts. And uh, the mother would also go ahead and help the father in doing his business, right? Uh, so there were there was always this balance that was nicely striked. And the question of people going to depression was never there. 
at least for pregnancy uh, it was never there but unfortunately in the last 15 to 20 years we are seeing that women are really undergoing a lot of stress even during pregnancy times and abortions are becoming very common if anybody is pregnant and pregnant right now hearing this you know i don't think i'm speaking negative i'm only telling positively that just take it easy on your job take it easy in your, your targets child is very important relax and have a good time right uh, have a good time observing yourself as your body changes emotionally you change as you're going to have a child so very important thing and these these days another biggest problem is not having children uh, that's also because of too much mental problems though they take so many medicines alternate medicine improving uh, uh, improving so many counts you know sperm counts or pregnancy enhancing counts or uh, exercises but unless unless a couple has good mental health when that gets affected this is a very important topic i'm talking about and you all know most of it i'm just trying to reiterate that how important is mental health in our life and how much we just ignore it how much we just ignore it right i'll tell you my own uh, example uh, one other example is i was doing this project in um, g uh, for g it was implementation of uh, transportation system uh, global transportation system gts something like that uh, in in integration with oracle so i was managing that program big big program you know um, team was sitting in bangalore and team was sitting in hyderabad and team was sitting in south carolina so so i was from the vendor side names apart which company i represented that time i was working for wipro that's okay i can tell my i'll not reveal the other person's name there was this project manager from the client side from ge side and she was only 24 and a half or 25 years old just 25 years old very young very very young right and uh, you know very fit fit good looking you know uh, girl you know coming from a good big university in america and she is made into a project manager on a fast track course in in ge in ge what they do is they identify some of the youth and they put them on fast track growth so at a very young age they are made into managers and uh, some of them survive some of them leave you know because of the stress so me and she you know uh, we always used to have some arguments on the floor uh, we also had some good moments you know in terms of understanding each other and making it work for the project team you know so we used to have lunch together one of the common thing that we used to do is okay wherever which our meetings we are attending that's okay let's have lunch together me she and another person also you know like two three of us together so it so happened that one of the days uh, we were having lunch and uh, she got a phone call and uh, she her husband called actually and uh, she felt she wants to talk to him something not confidential but in privacy so she left she left the place where we were having lunch and i was still having my lunch and uh, looking at my phone and just i happened to see her her purse you know her her handbag right ladies handbag have a lot of things you shouldn't look into it i didn't want to look into it but i it was open it was like this you know, like open so i was eating and then i just looked into that and then i saw a bunch of medicines you know uh, like strips of medicines they were standing like this clearly half visible outside right so i could not i could not not notice it it was very apparent so i said okay let me see what it is so i am a very bad medical uh, background person so i don't know the medicine names i just looked at it and then i said why would a 24 year old girl take medicines so many medicines so i just looked at the name then i forgot you know i mean i forgot meaning i just ignored it then after going home uh, i browsed after going home i was browsing something else and i remembered about the medicine so immediately i just browsed i just browsed about that medicine and i was shocked that that medicine is specifically given by doctors it can't be purchased on the shelf and that medicine is for extreme people in extreme depression 
extreme depression meaning uh, you would not give that kind of medicine you know to any normal person they cannot control their emotions you know when something happens they can even react violently on others unless they have that medicine that medicine kind of keeps their nerves blood going very smoothly and it doesn't increase their blood pressure and their emotions are well mannered and well kept i was shocked why would a girl who is 24 and a half years old take that medicine and uh, she just just married you know i she told she told me about her husband and how much she loves him and she showed her photographs uh, with her husband they going on vacations i mean general talk but i was shocked to see why is she taking that medicine because that is for acute acute mental condition people then i was discussing this thing uh, in con- a confidential way with some of my other friends who also lived in us and americans also and i was shocked to know that one out of three americans has a lot of mental issues one out of three depression you know and there are several names given to it several names given to it uh, one second i have to take this call yeah i'm sorry i'm back yeah um so where was i what was i saying can anyone help me recollect one out of 3 or uh, so yeah, so one out of 3 yeah so one out of 3 that's a big number right that's a big number one out of 3 just imagine um, you are sitting in your cubicle and two other people are sitting and one out of them has serious mental issues <laughs> so they take this tablets this drugs quite a lot to keep themselves in a good mental situation right so what happens to a person when he is uh, not well mentally situated right they react in a very violent way or a un- unprecedented way or a surprising way you know uh, you and somebody has a argument and we just shout at each other and leave a person is mentally disturbed can even take something and hurt you can beat you or he might kill you or push you or push himself just imagine you you shouted at somebody and that fellow goes and jumps under a bus what would you think you know what did i do i didn't say anything you know why did that person do something like that that is called mental issues you know because they, they don't have their emotions in control can you imagine i'm talking about people in so called developed country which we keep tagging india as a developing country america is a developed country europe is a developed uh, continent russia is developed country like that we keep tagging these you know based on our gdps and all that but something most important is how much mentally stable they are there is in india you don't have that much problem but it is cropping up now now with uh, we trying to lead individual um, very independent lives uh, it's slowly coming up right so as you can see now coming to india let's see you know in india do we have any so yeah one second yeah so yes so in india you can see the what happened yes yeah. so hypertension 30% of indians above the age of 18 have hypertension problem blood pressure right hypertension what happens if your heart starts you know pumping very fast tak 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 how many of you have done gardening anybody in the call who has done gardening any time in their life hmm gardening has anybody done gardening uh yeah lakshman yeah rakesh so so it's a very simple question i'm asking so you water your plants so when you're watering a plant what happens if you pour the water from a really high place you know like 5 feet high you start pouring the water on the towards the plant what happens is it good for the plant bad for the plant uh, it depends upon the size of the plant if the 
plant uh, yeah let's let's assume let's assume for now a uh, 1 feet a uh, 1 feet long plant uh, it's a, not good lakshman in a 1 because, feet spot uh, yeah the soil uh, uh, falls out and uh, uh, right. Be visible, which is yeah, it makes a hole. Basically, it makes a hole, right? Right. Yeah. And the and the soil keeps coming out and makes a hole. And right. you can after some time you can even see the roots of the tree of the plant, right? That's exactly what happens when you when your blood pressure is not in control. In a simple way, and I'm not a doctor, but I can tell you that's exactly what happens. Is your blood is pumping blood so fast, more faster than needed. And your organs are getting that blood, right? All the organs need blood, right? Whether it's a liver, stomach, lungs, brain, they all need that blood. So when the blood pressure is high, it's as good as you are hitting the blood. You are hitting the blood on that organ in a much faster pace than it is expecting it, right? And uh, it's as good as putting the water from such a high place into the pot, which makes a hole and even removes the mud. That's exactly what happens when you have high blood pressure. It's so important. You know, a lot of people take it easy. Ah, unte undi. What is a big deal? You know, I have high blood pressure. You know, that's okay. Everybody has. And somebody is quoting these days. Oh no, Gandhi had 180 also. You know, or somebody had 200 also. They lived 100 years. You know, why should we think about it? It's all nonsense. You know, blood pressure. I'm not saying 110 by 80 is ideal, but I'm saying high blood pressure is bad. Right. So, what did I say? The number. I told the number as 30% uh, of Indians above the age of 18 have high blood pressure. Has anybody ever visited any hospital for uh, heart checkup? Heart checkup or uh, what do you call that? Uh, high blood pressure or anything like that. Yeah. Okay. If, if you you don't want to say it, but let me try to tell. So one of my colleagues had pain in his left arm, right? He was working, I was working in Wipro at that time in Hyderabad. And he had, you know, his uh, hand, left hand was paining, right? And immediately as soon as left hand pains, you know, people have that feeling, oh my God, I'm going to get heart attack now. <laughs> right? So, oh, my left hand is paining. So, so I told, okay, don't worry, I'll take you to the hospital. So we both went to Kondapur there is there was a Apollo clinic there. I don't know if it's there now, been a while. But I took him there, and then um, I was surprised that when I went to Apollo clinic, and then uh, I went to the floor and I said, my my friend is having some pain in his left arm, and so they gave me a form saying, please fill this. The form had two three questions, so I said, yes, he is having left arm pain and. Is having something, something, something. I gave it. And then she said, you should go to floor, floor number four. Go to fourth floor. They said, what happened? I asked her, what happens in fourth floor? She said, uh, fourth floor is exclusively for hypertension. I was surprised that, are you seeing me? Are you telling me that fourth floor is dedicated for patients like us? She said, you know, with a, with a smile, she said, yes, sir, it's very common. Every day we have 20, 20 people coming from Infosys, TCS and all these places <laughs> with the same complaint that their hand is paining and, you know, they have pumping, you know, they're feeling breathless or so we have dedicated that floor for hypertension. Can you believe it? You know, I was, I was, I didn't know whether to laugh or to, you know, feel sad. Um, then I took him there and uh, they, they checked out uh, his blood flow and they said he's okay. You know, he's okay. Uh, they do that ECG test, right? They did all that and little treadmill also they did. They said, this fellow is okay. They didn't go for angiogram or anything. So point that I'm trying to make is what we think, uh, we don't actually focus on this problem, but your mental health is so much affecting your physical health today that uh, heart attacks and so many things are not because of your heart getting weak, because of your mind becoming weak, right? You're not able to control um, your, your, your mind. Your mind is making you scared of things. See, what does mind do? Let us, let us meditate on this stupid mind for a few minutes. What does mind do? Mind creates fear in you. It creates extreme amount of fear in you for something that did not happen. For something did not happen. 
it mind tells her it might happen right f e a r uh, there is a full there is a definition of this false evidence appearing real <laughs> f e a r false evidence appears real right so fear is nothing but it it does not happen it is false but it you feel that it's real right and that's what mind does so mind uncontrolled mind is the greatest enemy as explained in bhagavad gita also is that it makes you feel oh my god what is going to happen to me right so it creates that uh, feeling so in india also the stress problem is not stress stress is not a bad thing stress is energy we'll discuss about that but mental problems are really a big problem now right so if you go by uh, as i told <clears throat> overall we have seen the whole planet just now you know we are all in the same game just different levels dealing with the same hell but just different levels right so we are all there uh should we ignore all this information that we got and just go back to our uh, workstations and continue what we are doing no definitely not no intelligent person no sane fellow will do anything like that right so you can see mental health is such a big problem one out of four people one out of 10 people suicide so many things are happening life expectancy is going down right due to mental illness people are dying sooner than expected so at least on the face of it let me ask before we start dealing with it my dear friends i ask the same question do you how many of you feel that mental health problems are actually true it's not a illusion that we are talking about do you all agree hmm? that we actually have mental health issues many people have i have you have are we introspecting because if you all if all of you feel that mental health issues is really not applicable then i think i can end the seminar here we can say one hour you can go back to your desk and uh, continue what yes. you are doing yeah lakshman uh, we we do have uh, health problems but we don't recognize them that we are really having them uh, because uh, you know the moment we know that we are uh, about to enter into a health uh, a mental problem obviously that situation would have not come right so Uh, most of the mental problems they happen automatically i mean we we will not knowing about it i mean but you know that we are into a mental problem that will convert into some physical problem it, then we'll start dealing with uh, body problem i mean uh, uh, these problems and the mental problem keeps on increasing right so yes it happens but if we are able to identify it at early stages some remedies against it i mean i think uh, things would be better yeah thank you thank you rakesh yeah uh, personal experience i'm saying that so yes. the quickly you uh, realize it the early you'll be out of it yes the quickly you realize it the early you can prevent it you can stop the damage that it can cause to your body and others also right anybody else do you really feel that we should uh, discuss this topic or you feel that it's an important topic yes of course you know people who are uh, mentally normal and stable who deal uh, you know lot of uh, who are part part of lot of activities you know externally like uh, you know work life or you know family part of family or work life you know they it is, it is utmost important uh, for them to discuss so it's so obviously everyone is part of their family and uh, part of the work life you know, they endeavor they, they, they deal with lot of external forces So let me let me tell you. yeah yeah thank you thank you ravi yeah so i'll tell you one amazing uh, story not full story but of this person who was uh, who was md for i think tata motors not tata motors one of these big motor giant companies ford motors or i don't remember so this person you know he was heading this big uh, position as a managing director for such a big uh, company and he would uh, he would also uh, go to clubhouse and uh, you know play tennis and uh, he would go and uh, have so many friends uh, so called friends you know he used to have clubhouse parties wife you know uh, very beautiful wife maybe children i don't know that level of detail um so he had lot of activities you know it's not like he is only sitting in the office and uh, 
you know, scrolling around his desk or achieving targets alone. Obviously, he had relationship problems. His wife and he had a lot of arguments, and which is very normal. Any house would have, right? Two egos under the same roof always a problem. <laughs> But anyway, so he also was going through this normal, and people thought that he's very happy, well-established person at a young age, in a big position. Uh, recognized for what he's doing, a lot of rewards and awards in the office, right? Uh, rewards and recognition program, we say that, right? In every company. And uh, they were living in Singapore. He and his wife, they were living in Singapore. He used to travel around India, around the world, come to India many times, head offices in India. So one fine day, this guy who has a lot of sports friends, plays tennis, plays, goes to swimming pool, has so many external activities apart from work life. One fine day, he and his wife had a little extended argument and the guy goes to the balcony and jumps from the 40th floor of a big skyscraper building and dies. Right? Surprising. Right? So we can't say that if somebody is going to clubhouse, can we see him playing tennis, has a lot of parties, is not in mental problems. So what is this mental problem? Uh, are we just thinking that, okay, I think if I, how will I cure my mental problems? I think I should go and go for yoga. I think I should go for uh, having some Zumba classes, you know, dance Zumba classes. I'll come out of the mental problems. Uh, or I'll go for a vacation to, I'll, every three months I'll spend 40% of my salary and take my family to different parts of the world, we'll go on vacations. No, that is also not going to solve. So what is this mental problem that we're talking about? Right? Very important to understand that getting tired is one thing. Getting tired is one thing. Uh, one second. Yeah, getting tired is one thing. Getting stressed out is one thing and having mental problem is another thing. Don't combine these two. You know, a uh, lot of times people do that. That uh, one second, I think Satya calling, I'll just send you a message. Taking. Yeah. Right? So people getting uh, tired of their mental, you know, they're getting stressed out with so much project work, multiple projects. That's not what I'm talking about. Mental problem is something beyond it. Right? So I want you all to get introduced to that. And as Rakesh was saying, that we should uh, find out whether the problem exists and try to cure it before it actually starts uh, affecting us. Right? Are you all with me so far? I'm actually yes. going. I'm actually going very slow. You can see that the way I'm talking also is very slow today. I don't know if you've, I'm deliberately doing it because I want you all to uh, go with me. You know, uh, understand from depth what these problems are, right? So effects of mental disturbances. You know, people have uh, physical. Uh, it shows up physically. It shows up behaviorally, emotionally, cognitions. You know, this. Is, you know, like physically, when people have a lot of mental problems, you know, they have tightness in the chest, weakness in the muscles, dry mouth, depersonalization, you know, over sensitivity of noise. They can't take even little noise coming in their way. Oh, you know, stop that noise. And immediately they'll react like that. Very less tolerance to any disturbance. Behaviorally, you know, they can't sleep well in the nights. Um, they dream a lot, especially about ghosts and spirits or something scary. You know, they cry at very easily, they cry. Of course, that's not being bad in all cases, but I'm talking specifically about people who have mental health issues. Social withdrawal, they don't like to be with people. They don't, they always comment on their relatives and friends, you know, as if they're negative. They don't want to be with anyone. Um, emotional, emotionally, you know, again, uh, they get guilty very fast. They feel they're helpless. Nobody will help me. They feel very insecure all of a sudden, right? They are in anxiety. They postpone things, right? Uh, or they keep thinking about things, you know, yearning, yearning, yearning all the time. And uh, cognitions, you know, uh, they are 
preoccupied uh, you know sense of presence is not there wherever they are right and visual hallucinations they can't clearly see anything you know these also are there i'm not saying all these problems will be there i'm not saying many of these problems will be there i'm saying these are some indications at a external level when people have mental uh, disturbances right um, let's go you know one more step so mental health illness creates fearful mind so what mental health does is it creates fear in you what did i say the definition of fear if you remember false can anybody remember what i told fear means false evidence appears real appears real <laughs> thank you okay so false evidence appears real right so these people have lot of fears and my dear friends as we are becoming more and more modern and the gadget gadgeted life right we think that we are advancing big houses lot of facilities gated communities uh, efficient laptops palm tops and uh, so called technology cloud cloud based applications you know uh, everything is getting automated artificial intelligence data science all these uh, initiatives we really feel that we are advancing but unfortunately lot of fears are also increasing like for example in the you know from a to z i collected this from internet i was shocked that just see how many kinds of fears are there some very really funny fears you know uh, you know something like fear of washing or bathing <laughs> can you believe it there is a name for that ablutophobia ablutophobia <laughs> right uh, fear of chickens electrophobia and uh, you know fear of books bibliophobia <laughs> clinophobia you know fear of going to bed even just to go and sleep people are fear fear of uh, beautiful women calignophobia phobia i don't know I, i just it it was there so i just showed up so fear of if you can go from d you know fear of dentist dentophobia <laughs> fear of sun heliophobia right fear of rooms koinoni phobia right uh, gamophobia fear of marriage <laughs> right uh, geliophobia fear of laughter people are even fearful when somebody laughs can you believe it uh, this one Epst epistemophobia fear of knowledge right uh, fear of computers if anybody is fearful of computers you know here is your way log logizo mechanophobia <laughs> the word itself is phobia <laughs> it's scary word you know fear of computers right and so like there are there's so many fears you know there's so many fears you know i can just keep going line by line fear of cooking you know fear of uh, uh, what is it philophobia fear of falling in love or being in love right uh, orthophobia fear of properties right or plutophobia fear of wealth mm. obsophobia obsophobia fear of gaining weight yes a fear of returning home so many fears right so you know it can keep going on and there are so many different different phobias on this planet does it surprise you guys you know to see so many fears and actually if you go by this list you might find something familiar to yourself <laughs> right so what do you fear right we might be the best educated the best talented the most smart but when fear attacks we lose mental equilibrium that's how dangerous fear is there is no religion greater than truth and there is no truthful person knows no fear right a person who is rigveda it's mentioned in rigveda that the person is knowledgeable of self realization spend some time on spirituality understands who he is reads from scripture not spirituality from some big daddy fellow you know uh, no that's not what you want you want to really read the ancient knowledge given by god and try to understand who you are where you are you know get that self realization tree knowledge they can overcome fear otherwise fear can never be overcome different different means it comes right so let's uh, fix the problem now wait but there are few things right uh, before i tell the solution some prerequisites are there what are those prerequisites unfortunately this is too demanding what i'm going to tell you now okay let me before that ask all of you uh, how many of you want to really fix your mental health issues even if you have or do you don't think you you have are you ready for it 
should we should we try to fix it today at least some of it yes hmm? okay i'm hearing one yes uh, let's start that that's a good start right so i'm going to ask you something that is very difficult for you to give up because these are prerequisites for us to fix your mental issues are you going to agree to this if you don't agree then we can't it's like a doctor's treatment right so the most important thing you want to agree is no whatsapp <laughs> can we stop whatsapp for some time in a day uh, very important because you, see if your mind wants to do something or you want to do something with your mind it should be in your control not in the control of whatsapp right what's off just let's off that whatsapp for some time not use whatsapp during certain times of a day you have to deliberately do it right if you are having any mental issues you think so you should first thing first stop whatsapp i'm not saying completely stop give it a time one hour in a day i'll see whatsapp or once in the morning once in the night that's it and you know, i'm not going to do uh, more than that now another thing i know it's already demanding but i'm going to ask something more than that uh, more difficult for you to do no facebook right people want to post what's happening in their life to everybody showing as if they are very uh, uh, very active and very lively but how many of you know that the people who post in facebook are the most depressive uh, now this is very difficult for everyone to do don't check your emails you know not even don't give instant responses mm, yeah you might check but don't immediately start responding you can wait on it try stopping yourself from responding that itself is the biggest start of fixing your mental issues right simple things i'm saying now this one is really really difficult what is that mobile phone switch it off okay how many of you can switch off your mobiles can, can i hear one noise saying yes or no 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 <laughs> you have to switch off your mobile sometime okay Some, sometimes like, i used to do yeah you yeah, you know once i forgot uh, rakesh you know once i forgot my mobile um in my home and i had i was going out with my friends and uh, it was a whole day tour and i forgot my mobile at my home after going 20 kilometers i realized that my mobile is not with me and then i told i have to take a u turn because you know i need it then one of my friends told that just take it easy if the, if it is so important your wife will anyway call me i am your friend you are with me so why are you even bothered let's go so you wouldn't believe that day it touched my pocket so many times to realize that i don't have that thing and after some time i really started liking it you know that there's no message there's no interruption i'm doing something i was doing some plantation that day in my farm and uh, i'm i'm planting and moving the soil i'm keeping some manure putting the seeds closing i'm doing and no disturbance no disturbance you know no uh feeling of uh, uh you know that i'm being missed or i'm missing something and uh, then i came back home you know almost after like 7 8 o'clock in the evening to my surprise seeing the whatsapp has like 400 messages and you know so many other unread messages in email box and but world didn't stop and i also saw something very unusual that there were problems that came um uh, and then after 50 messages they got solved also <laughs> by, by me not being there by me not being there problems were actually getting solved so who is the problem here <laughs> right i realize that actually i am the problem <laughs> so it's it's a good thing to sometimes switch off your mobile so so guys you have to do this at least say you just say this to yourself every saturday i'll do this or every second saturday i'll do this no whatsapp no facebook no emails no mobile so actually if you go no mobile automatically all the three are gone isn't it because the whole world is in that mobile just switch off that mobile you know for half a day or in the evening just switch it off and uh, then you can actually start fixing your i'm not saying i'm not saying mental problems can be fixed by this you can start fixing it when you have this when you when you start with this these are the prerequisites right uh, you want to really understand first of all understanding what your mental problems are and then fixing them so two different steps understanding what my mental problems are 
then fixing that. So to understand also that you have mental problem, you have to, you have to switch this off. Is anyone ready to do that? Hmm? Or do you think, Naibaya, you know, I can't, I can't do this much for myself. I, I already do that. <laughs> Good, good. And, uh, uh -huh. Anybody else? I am also doing this stuff. Yeah. At least on weekends, sometime, you know, weekdays, yeah, you're working, your customers can call, boss can call, that's okay. But, okay. So this is one of the prerequisite guys, okay? If you're not ready to do this, then you better live with your mental problems. You can't help it. Almost feels like the world has stopped, isn't it? When you stop all these things, but don't worry. Uh, you know, people, things will just move on, right? Don't need to worry about that. So how to cure the mental health and how to understand that you have mental health problems. Uh, we all have disease and infection. This slide I already showed to you as part of lifestyle management. So I'm just going to go very fast. We have infections. We try to cure them by washing the face but they again come up or you, or you blast them and they keep coming up, right? Boils, your pollution, you try to do Swachh Bharat and all those things. Uh, you even stop big companies from producing, but still the pollution doesn't stop. You know, it just comes back, right? So we have to fix the root problem. Root problem, infection in blood and too much human greed. You're, you're producing, fire companies producing so much because you're so greedy to spend. So to cure mental health, you have to attack the root cause going on vacation, joining laughter clubs. Have, have anybody seen the laughter club, guys? You know, a bunch of old people, they stand in a circle and laugh in the morning. Ha, 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 ha. Have you seen that anywhere? Yes, I've seen that. <laughs> every morning I see. <laughs> yeah, in every park. Trust me, guys, that's not going to stop your mental problems. That is okay. That's a good feeling, temporary feeling. Or taking alcohol, taking intoxication, drinking, becoming devdas is not going to help your mental problems, right? Uh, I'll change my friend circle again. That's not going to help your mental problems. So what is it that can really uh, help your mental problems, right? So here is a very uh, important thing that I'm going to discuss now. What is the time? Yeah, 3.20. Now, the next 10 minutes, I want all of you to be very, very attentive. And I want you to start that yoga of mobile. Just shut off your mobile or don't see any message on your mobile. I'm also getting some, but I'm not picking it up. I'm going to tell you a very important thing. Thoughts we choose to carry have a big impact. In our mind, guys, mind, we carry four kinds of thoughts, right? Uh, number one, positive thoughts. Number two, negative thoughts. Number three, necessary thoughts, or I can say routine thoughts. Number four, wasteful thoughts, right? So what are these? So positive thoughts is, uh, is things that give you positivity towards this world, right? Positive thoughts. So you have to carry those. Like it can be about giving charity to somebody or caring about somebody or being grateful to somebody, right? Being grateful to somebody, um, being thankful to somebody, uh, being uh, positively disposed towards somebody, participating in social welfare activities. Uh, these are all positive thoughts. Thoughts which make you feel that what you're doing is nice for others. What you're doing is nice for your own health, right? You're not, you're not choosing to harm anybody. Being forgiving is also a positive thought, forgiving. Yes, uh, just forgive, forget. Right? I am not going to remember what happened uh, then. I'll just forget it. Or I'm forgiving somebody. Yes, you have done wrong to me. I'm forgiving. Right? So these are all positive thoughts. So uh, in your mind, four kinds of thoughts are always there. Positive thoughts we just discussed. What are negative thoughts? Grudge towards somebody. Memory of a bad incident with somebody. Uh, memory of somebody cheating you. Right? Uh, memory of somebody, uh, you know, or memory of you wanting ill for somebody, uh, anger, you know, anger and anger related uh, reactions, uh, envy, pride, greed, comparisons, 
all these things form part of negative thoughts right negative thoughts so it's in our hands whether you want to carry these negative thoughts or no it's completely in our hands it's difficult but it's doable uh, you have to let go the negative thoughts you have to let go uh, or you have to at least reduce them or you have to you have to stop thinking about them how many of you rewind yourself to a time when somebody did somebody cheated you and every time you look back and think i think i should have not done or not allowed him to do so i could have done better than that did it happen with anybody thinking about the past how could it happen to me next time if, or or you or in your in your own mind you go to the past and you actually beat that fellow <laughs> for what wrong he did you know mentally you just beat him up you know and then you come back ah you know, next time i'm going to take my revenge yes yes lakshman yeah yes those those are those negative thoughts see guys one more thing i would like to tell is i'm going to tell something very important okay please focus on this whether or not you have faith on god because god is a very uh, individual uh, subject which i normally deal in uh, spiritual seminars not in this not in this personality development seminars belief in god faith in god and all that but i would like to tell i would like to ask one thing do you all of you believe that what you you know what goes around comes around or uh, uh, when you do bad to somebody you get that bad back when you do good to somebody you get that good back do you believe at least that much yes yeah. i believe yes i believe even if you are a atheist you believe that you know even if you say that okay god doesn't exist but this is often believed right when you do something bad to somebody it, you will get it back and when you do call karma people, yeah karma yeah i i was hesitant to use that word karma <laughs> you know because some people are like oh my god he's talking religion but anyway karma is now a very famous word even in english dictionary right there is a karma cafe in uh, banjara hills i don't know if you've seen that in uh, in us i was having a meeting in a customer place and suddenly this guy customer american gets up and says it's karma i said what i didn't and what did you say <laughs> i was like what did you say i didn't understand is it karma then <laughs> then i told okay see karma is it yes karma you know then I understood that even americans now are understanding two words at least from vedic dictionary one is yoga and second is karma so their understanding is heavily wrong but it is they're using it now that it's your karma they say like that yeah even so, bob marley he, he has a song called karma <laughs> yeah bob marley yeah 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 many many it's a famous word now karma is a very famous word now. but unfortunately it is used for the wrong reasons they don't understand the karma siddhanta if you're all interested we can take one session only on karma you know bad karma good karma praradha karma you know suniti karma there's so many types of karma combined karma group karma country level karma your individual karma how it affects you know so many things there it's a very intricate matter uh, very nicely explained in bhagavad gita also and many vedic scriptures so i'll not get into that i'm all i'm saying is at least you all believe that what goes around comes around right i mean what you do bad to others it does come back to you you all believe that right yes yeah so let me ask a question so whenever somebody does harm to you right now please pay attention i'm going to ask a very important question to you now whenever somebody does anything bad to you is it your duty to correct him is it your duty to correct him to the point that you are satisfied no no and it is depend is it is it a revenge or correction was that Uh, swati here so when you say correction so is it uh, you mean to say that taking revenge and feeling good yeah. or it's just you can say revenge revenge is a heavy word i was not yeah but see correction or it. it can go in a very uh, a very uh, positive way also correction can go but when we say my, revenge my question is my crush. question is my my question is it your duty i mean um, yeah as a parent maybe you know you are a parent and your son has done something wrong you have to correct him or who else will correct him 
right but somebody in the office or somebody outside did something bad with you uh, yeah you reacted to it i'm not saying not react i'm not saying don't react i'm not saying you know somebody slapped you and like gandhi issue another yahan bhi maro no i'm not saying that uh, but to what extent do you want that person to be corrected you want to make him you want to you want to you want to be the person to make him realize that what he or she has done is wrong until you are satisfied at that moment we will think but uh, after uh, thinking we will realize that uh, it is not our duty see if you have faith in god whatever religion you belong to if you faith real faith in god don't you think for any bad that happens that person is going to get it back in some time in life it does yes, sir. it comes back it has to like for example you are a parent you have two children you have given them two toys they both are playing with the toys right one child has taken the toy of another person sorry somebody is speaking i'll try to mute yeah it's muted okay so one both the children are playing with two toys and one child has taken the toy of another person another child and another child starts crying ah she starts crying what do you think the parent will do don't you think the parent will go and explain the other child not to do that and give back the toy to that other child parent will do that right you will do that right so yes. so naturally even god will do that aham bija pradapitah it's mentioned in bhagavad gita that i am the seed giving father of everyone right aham sarvasva prabho matta sarvam pravartate iti mutva bhujante maam buddha bhava samanvitah it is mentioned in bhagavad gita 10.8 that i am the controller the proprietor the creator of everything and everything works under my direction spiritual and material both everything right and the one who understands this is peaceful uh, so so god is there to correct people when they do something wrong uh, i'm not saying we should not react to it but we should not try to make it a point that we are the person to give the final judgment right uh, we should not try to make sure that the opposite person is completely getting corrected in front of you right there right then unfortunately uh, these days people are becoming very less patient and uh, to wait for justice uh, or why do you think why do you think that justice has to come in first place somebody did something bad to you you may not uh, yeah you know that he has done bad to you how many of you think that maybe i did something bad to him and it's coming back to me have you ever thought like that if you are wrong yeah if you if you go by karma siddhanta or the one that we just discussed or whatever you do comes back to you maybe it is happening because i must have done something wrong this life past life whenever did any of you think like that any time yes yeah it's very scientific by the way huh? i'm not talking illogical faith i'm talking about if you go to university of virginia university of virginia uh, you can browse university of virginia ian e. stevenson ian e. stevenson he was the head of a department in university of virginia and he did 2000 plus cases you know study of rebirth reincarnation yes it's there and none of them are from india none of those births are from india you know because the moment they reincarnation they say, oh all indian people only speak about these things no he did that research it's there go go see it university of virginia ian e. stevenson you will find it 2000 cases so it is true that there's something happening people are taking birth again and again may not be in this planet sometimes other planets or sometimes you are coming back to the same planet same colony sometimes the same country i don't know it can happen in many cases like that so it can also happen that you have done something bad to somebody in past life and it comes back to you again um, 
see there is action and reaction action and reaction action and reaction so you do action you get a reaction you get two action you get a reaction right what is the principle of newton every action has its equivalent reaction something like that right corresponding for every reaction. action there will be an equal and opposite reaction yeah, opposite reaction right you say that so you have done something bad to somebody you get a bad for that you have done something bad for somebody you get bad for that now i'm going to add something you done something bad for somebody and no death comes you done something bad and death comes where are you going to get that bad reaction from already you did right now in this very life it is very much possible that you did not get reaction for everything that you have done it's very much possible it can happen i'm talking very scientific right you have done something bad and death came because death has a time death is death has its own time every time you take birth there is a date of birth and there is a date of death also automatically is kept there in fact ayurveda says number of breaths is already counted how many breaths this fellow will take right right at the time of death birth so death comes in between and there is some karma you know there is some activity and the reaction is missing so the reaction comes in next life right so i will not let's not dwell into the topic if somebody is interested we can have a separate session on that on spiritual quotient when we do that we'll discuss so all i'm trying to say is are you the person who should execute the revenge completely or some of it at least you should leave it for the destiny right uh, it can be a fight between husband and wife are you the person to correct your husband think about it are you the only person who can correct your husband or correct your wife are you the only person <laughs> can you do it have you have you been trying it I, have you been trying to do it for the last 20 years 10 years 5 years could you do that no sometimes yes <laughs> see i'm not saying not to react i'm saying not to react is not what i'm saying i'm saying you can postpone your reaction or you can you can partly react and leave the rest to the destiny to decide if that person has done something bad to you he is going to get it back so why don't you let that happen why you have to be the person to execute it right there are you all with me are you understanding what i'm saying yes sir yes. yeah so when you are so when you are carrying that too much in your mind it creates mental health issues revengeful feelings revengeful feelings is a very big mental health issue but if you tell your mind every time something bad happens to you you merely tell your mind hey stop shouting you are telling to your own mind stop shouting i don't think i want to react on this person maybe i believe that what he has done for, done to me is actually for my good or let krishna decide you know uh, when it has to come back to him let god decide when it has to come back to him why i want to spoil my day trying to punish that fellow right hmm? i'll tell you one incident one of my friends sudhir his name is sudhir this incident happened long time back so he was he was driving his bike and somebody came and uh, you know kind of bit is you know somebody could not press the brake properly it came and hit his bike and uh, he was in a car that somebody was in a car and immediately this fellow shouted on him he immediately pulled back his car and started going fast he started chasing his car in the chase he had a accident he fell down again he got up and again started chasing and finally it went back and forth the roads were kind of empty so they could chase each other and finally they stopped at a place where people intervened and they stopped the fight but what happened is the small bump of accident that happened was very small as compared to all the other things that all the other risks that he took to chase were much higher than you know the original problem so the act of revenge became a bigger problem than the revenge itself right and he spoiled his entire day and his consciousness also got spoiled in entire, entire big time sometimes sometimes you do bad to people 
and it is uh, so much sometimes you do so much bad that it disturbs you also you don't have to take so much revenge in one of the theme that bhagavad gita carries i read bhagavad gita many times i love it is that when arjuna came to the war he came with a feeling of revenge when arjuna came to the war he came with a feeling of revenge he wanted to take revenge for all the injustice that was done on to him and his family he wanted to take revenge from karna he wanted to take revenge from duryodhana he wanted to take revenge from dushasana he wanted to take revenge from dhritarashtra planned for it, even killing his mother he wanted to take revenge from shakuni he wanted to take revenge from every single person who supported uh, the ill act of you know disrobing his wife he had so many revengeful feelings but the whole purpose of bhagavad gita you know why krishna spoke bhagavad gita before that revengeful war is to remove the feeling of revenge from arjuna and say, and keep the feeling of duty inside so there is something about revenge and something about duty right when you go out towards people to take revenge you get affected you get reaction to that also you do something you get a reaction to that also but when you do it as a duty you have detached yourself from the outcome even if you did not achieve the revenge still you will be satisfied that i have done my duty so as a king arjuna was a king is a kshatriya king his duty was to punish people who have insulted women to punish people who have taken somebody else's wealth to punish a dynasty which supports injustice so dharma sansthapan arthe sambhavami yuge yuge he has appeared again again and again god himself appears again and again to re establish dharma so the revengeful feeling had to removed remove the revengeful feeling and do it as a duty that was a very important message of bhagavad gita and that's what he did after 18 chapters then arjuna says okay now i am clear why i should do this war it is not about me taking a revenge for some incidents it's about establishing dharma back on the planet so now to establish dharma i will not see my relatives as relatives my brothers as brothers and because earlier i was seeing that when i'm trying to take revenge i became weak because i saw my brothers and my uncles there and i said i'll not do the war but when i look at it from a duty standpoint then i will not look at them as people i know and i'll actually take the revenge are you all following what i just told a difficult to understand yes yeah so revengeful feeling may not be a great strength to carry so we all do that in our life so that creates a lot of mental problems so what are the four thoughts mind carries positive thoughts negative thoughts so positive we discuss negative includes the revengeful feeling and all other bad that we wish to do to others third is routine thoughts routine thoughts you know uh, thoughts that you have to get up in the morning go to the office do your project work cook for your children cook for yourself you know pack pack your lunch pack your dinner whatever so these are routine thoughts that your mind should carry it will carry nothing wrong fourth one is waste thoughts wasteful thoughts what are the wasteful thoughts what if this would not have happened in the past what if i could do this in the future what if uh, my action was different then so the reaction could have been different what if what if what if this what if analysis is waste of time right yeah we have to learn lessons from the past doesn't mean that uh, we have to keep our past in our front and ruin our future right so so these are the four thoughts guys okay once again what was the first one positive thoughts negative thoughts routine thoughts wasteful thoughts so when you are entering the office or when you are entering your home your mind should be not heavy it should be very light so you can't keep all these four thoughts and go to office and your home wherever you can't be peaceful if you have all these four thoughts in you positive negative routine waste all these things if you carry your head will become so heavy isn't it very difficult to carry such a kind of head so it become very heavy and uh, then you can't do anything meaningfully correctly you can't do anything right you will you will definitely do something wrong so it's very important you control your thoughts 
you control your uh, you you choose you choose what to carry and what not to carry right you choose what to carry and what not to carry see in your office bag do you carry all the files or do you just carry your laptop or you, you when you go on a vacation do you carry everything in your house or you just carry what is needed right you just carry what is needed and when you have the ability and the power to carry what is needed then you can control your mental problems are you with me did you understand what is what i what i'm trying to explain yes you should have the mental strength to choose what you want to carry in your mind if you don't have that then you are in big soup you know that's what people do they carry too many things yeah it's not it's not something that you'll achieve in a day you need a lot of will power to do that right you need a lot of will power to do what i'm saying the first thing first that i told is learn to switch off that mobile once in a while that itself is a biggest thing biggest favor you can do on yourself there are a lot of people who went into depression because of sushant singh rajput's death <laughs> i like him i like him as an actor i know some injustice is happening but that should not affect my life i should pray for him you can pray for him but that should not affect my life you know what i'm saying that should not you know make me shout in the house you know or that should not make me feel disturbed because something this is what is going on you know some two people fought in the uttar pradesh and i am watching the news in hyderabad and my impression towards my neighbor has changed because of that fight right media can change so many things weapons of mass distractions can create distractions right so we have to learn to switch off that useless thing for some time and then deal with the present and read something useful like a scripture like bhagavad gita right and learn verse by verse do something different fix your mind and when your mind is fixed guys nobody on the planet can touch you none of this work stress tensions will affect you 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 will get angry but anger will not control you you will control the anger there is a difference between a spiritual person and a material person spiritual person he will also get angry lot of people say that oh you are spiritual how come you are getting angry well spiritual person is can get angry but he can control his anger anger is not controlling him he can control the anger right so there are a lot of things to do so you have to choose what you want to carry right in your mind what you want to carry you have to choose so actually this topic needs a little more time um you know and i don't want to hurry up and close it uh, because there are several other things relating to mind you should understand how to control the mind how to control um and make your mind peaceful so that the mental disturbances are decreased and you lead a peaceful life actually you become peaceful from internal actually become peaceful internally rather than trying to show people that i'm peaceful hey see dude i'm so cool no that's okay that anybody can do or say bro you know i'm doing this you know all that is nonsense internally you should become peaceful by having the ability to carry what is carry what is needed and reject what is not needed in your own mind right so for i'll just stop it here but i want next 10 minutes i just want all of you to show some reflections on what we just discussed so we did, we continue this as part 2 of fitness beyond body is it okay guys or do you yeah, find yes, do, yeah. do you find do you find this interesting topic to continue and or or just finish it i have three more slides i can finish it off or do you want to dwell in this a little more it's very interesting yeah it is interesting Yeah, Lakshman, we can actually continue next week as well. Like maybe we can give few exercises also, like you 
questions also put yeah it you close. maybe you can do one small exercise yeah is you can come back to me you can come back and share you know this is a close group don't worry uh, don't have to name the person the place and all but you can share an experience which uh, which disturbed you and how you overcame it how you how you could overcome that experience right uh, whether it is at workplace or outside any of this experience right can we can we do that next week to start with yeah and then see i uh, more than you telling that incident i want you to start contemplating what you are learning here right we have we have learned some things today and i want you to go back and think about them contemplate and come back is it okay so before we sign off any other reflections what we discussed today and if it's please you know it's okay please open your screens for some time i'm practically seeing only black boxes today guys i'm really i'm telling you doesn't give me a great encouragement sometimes just open it for some time you know, i know who who you are how you look like <laughs> yeah right so what do you feel about what we discussed today anything that you want to add anything that you want feel free you know see these topics are not about me being more knowledgeable or you're not life teaches lessons to all at different levels right and we all share our experiences and learn right so do you want to reflect on anything in relevant to what we discussed today it is relevant sir also like uh, some of the time we 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 wanted to take revenge we are very much in anger so how to control our mind how to leave it everything on destiny that i have uh, learning in the sessions thank you thank you asa anybody else guys come on you have web cameras i know just open it i wish i had a button to just open everyone's that's very scary also i don't want to see <laughs> uh in my fast few like uh, i used to control my uh, angry but nowadays i am unable to control my angry hmm your project manager knows better <laughs> <laughs> not like uh, no no, no just i'm just joking i'm just joking yeah. I'm just, it's very natural see i'm telling you when you recognize the problem you can fix it if you don't if you deny the problem then you never fix it right we all have to recognize i have so many problems if i reveal all my problems then you'll be shocked we all have problems right but we should recognize them fix them one by one fix them one by one any other reflections from what we discussed today so we did discuss that mental issues are there throughout the world so don't think you are the only mental person <laughs> there are many psychopaths outside <laughs> so we are much better than them <laughs> psychopaths trying to take revenge without having reason or even i know i know person. these days it is so dangerous to get into a fight with anybody because you don't know who's all revenge he'll take on you did it my god you don't know <laughs> no it's true right what is that uh, famous dialogue now takke de le do right jhukne ka nahi you know in hindi it is jhukne ka nahi right nobody is right Uh, nobody is ready to yeah comp- uh, stop you know nobody is no no let's not stop let's fix it you know let's do it now yeah any other reflections okay so many so, things actually what, what we feel that uh, people should act according to us so in that process uh, actually we affect everybody around us so uh, many times we feel that what we are saying or what we are doing is right and try to change other person rather than trying to see their point and in that entire process we get ah, frustrated that's get that's irritated that's right so instead of that we can live and let others also live so maybe and as you said let destiny take uh, the thing uh, in its own hands rather than we actually trying to dictate somebody or trying to uh, control or correct someone 
maybe we yes. can try to communicate if they are doing something wrong at least towards you that this is what uh, what you have done and it's not okay for me but yes uh, leaving remaining things uh, to the rest of me yeah so great so thank you i know many will not speak i don't know why they don't but you know uh, some day the whole goal of this uh, series is at least after one year of tolerating me and the sessions some of you will start speaking right which is very important okay so so well, naga has matter. naga has <laughs> yeah. suddenly popped up <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah naga so naga was the session okay okay sir this session is because you are the only it person in yeah, every every employee actually connects with you so if naga can naga can if naga wants he can completely frustrate everybody by putting one okay. wire in another one another wire and uh, your mails go to somebody else's mailbox and somebody else's mailbox come to you and you know your time sheets are going to somebody else and you know your salary has gone somewhere and you can do lot of things So that's so everything is fine. Someone, someone salary is coming to our and uh, this thing that's a different thing. <laughs> or, or everybody salary is going to the Nagal account. <laughs> so, yeah. So anyway, on a lighter note, I'm just trying to lighten it up. Thank you all for joining, and uh, we will continue this uh, fitness beyond body, right? Fitness beyond body. How to fix your mental um, issues and how to better handle ourselves, right? So we'll continue this. it'll get and over we, next week for sure yeah, yeah. right uh, and, and anybody do have any expectation with this session next week because we are going to continue so you can write to lakshman and maybe he can try to cover those points and those things yeah you can session. do that yeah you can do that you can send me a one on one uh, i'll keep it confidential don't worry don't need to mention your name or his name or you know a specific incident but you can mention how it has been bothering and how to address it if you want to share like that and is it okay sometimes in between i'm i'm quoting from bhagavad gita or some spiritual things is that okay or anybody has any objection with that it is good it is good sir okay so we are taking it as a example uh, uh, not actually trying to appeal yeah. somebody and asking them to follow uh, at exactly. any cost so i think yeah. it's just an example so example is example can be from anywhere yeah faith is a personal thing don't want to disturb anybody's yeah. faith at the same time we can learn a lot from each other's faith that that's the whole point hmm? yeah so thank you thank you all and uh, you have a nice rest of the weekend and uh, don't take revenge don't take revenge on saturday sunday <laughs> and switch off your mobile <laughs> okay thank you thank you thank you sir thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Bye. bye bye